So I've pressed a book against the wall, and we're asking, do I need to exert an upward force from my hand when I push against it? So there's the book. Uh, let's pretend that the wall is like right there, but don't draw it in. I'll just put it there so you know what we're talking about. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Okay. Is the book sliding down the wall? Is it accelerating up the wall? So that means in the vertical direction, the forces must be, I'm looking for a word that begins letter B. So Cole, I know that there is a force the same size as mg. I'm not sure what force that is. I have a few guesses, but because I'm not sure, I'll draw the arrow, but I won't label it yet. Okay, I'll come back to that. Then, I was pushing against the book, and the force, if the wall was on the left, that means I was pushing into the wall. So let's call that Mr. Duick's applied force. Was the book sinking into the wall like quicksand? Was it flying off of the wall like Superman? Doesn't quite work anymore, but was it flying off of the wall? So I know that in this, in the horizontal direction, the forces must also be, I'm looking for a word that begins letter B, must be. So I'll draw an arrow, that's a bit too long. Uh, the same size as F applied, about like that. What do you think that force is? Well, F applied is this F one here. Wall. F wall? And I would have no problem if you called it F wall. But we have a special name for the force that a surface exerts in response to pressing against it. It's, it's, a, it's a normal force. A normal force doesn't have to be from the ground. It's from any surface. Am I pushing into the surface? The surface pushes back. So I'm going to call this the normal force. So what do you think that vertical force is then? Friction. Friction. If the wall was made out of ice, would I have to push harder to hold the book into place? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. And so you can sort of imagine a wall, Emma, as the ground turned on its side. If you all kind of turn your heads 90 degrees so that now for you folks, if you turn your head uh, this way, now the normal force is pointing up relative to your head. And we have uh, friction pointing along the ground. Gravity's pointing in the wrong way. But, but you can kind of think of it that way if you want to. This is what's going on whenever you either hold something against a wall or something all of you have done, if you've ever carried a heavy book or a heavy mass like this, with your fingers on the top pressing in from the sides, I'm only squeezing in on the sides. What are the forces acting on this book? Get the obvious one. Gravity. What else? Well, I'm applying a force to the book. What does the book do? Applies a normal force against my fingers. Friction is acting up. In fact, if I ease up my applied force, if I ease up this, what happens to the normal force? If this gets, if my applied force gets smaller, what happens to the normal force? Gets bigger. Get, because it's a Newton's third law, forces come in, forces, pairs, reactive force. And so friction is what times what? So if the normal force gets smaller, what happens to the force of friction? Watch. You can't tell, you have to take my word for it, but I'm relaxing my hand. Friction is getting smaller and smaller. Do you see what's happening now? There, it overcame gravity. There was the equilibrium point. You can feel it through your fingers. All of you have learned that. If you're carrying something really heavy, you've got to squeeze harder. What you're really doing is you're making a bigger normal force, which is therefore making a bigger force of friction, which is giving you a better safety margin against gravity. There's some good physics going on in just something as casual as carrying something horizontally to resist a vertical force. That's just, I, I, I always do that somewhere as a, hey, look at this, some very commonplace, everyday carrying a method, and there's some good physics there, Joel. Now we're going to start the lesson. It says this, in many body problems, we have several objects connected by strings, and the key to solving these is to realize that if they're connected by strings, they will all be accelerating at the same rate. 
They may be accelerating, Mike, in different directions, but I'm telling you, both of these, as long as I don't jerk on things, and we're not allowed to do that, all of our forces are going to be smooth pulls, um, they're going to accelerate at the same magnitude. Different direction, this mass is accelerating up, this mass is accelerating left, but the same magnitude. And if I, you, you okay with that? If I agree with that, then we can treat the system as a single object because all of the parts are accelerating at the same rate. You know what? I like example one, I like example one, I like example one. Although example one is going to become too easy because right now we're on a frictionless surface. We're on ice. We're going to start here. We're going to start here. Rihanna, what does example one want me to find? And then the? And that's how we're going to handle this. For many body problems, we'll start out looking at the whole system to find the acceleration of everything since they're connected by strings. And then if you want me to find specific forces, I'll look at one mass specifically. This is a job for a free body diagram. So I wrote down here, the solution is we're going to treat this system as a single object and we're going to write a force equation. I'm going to label the forces right up here and I'm going to start from left to right. There's no rule for that. Sierra, I'm only doing that so that all of our diagrams look the same. Sierra, on this three kilogram mass, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Which way? Now, normally I write mg. Sierra, in this question, is there more than one mass? Say yes. So I'm going to go m1g. What will I call the other mass, do you think, Sierra? m2. Okay. Uh, is M1 sinking to the ground like quicksand? Is it flying to you like Superman? So there has to be what force pointing up? Is there more than one mass? What mass number did I call this? I'm going to call this normal force number one to go with mass number one. It's worth being organized, because especially since all you're doing is adding one extra number. What else? Which way is that 3 kilogram mass M1 accelerating? If we're on ice and it's attached to a rope which is attached to the 2 which is being pulled with the 20, which way is it accelerating? To the right or forwards? So there has to be a force pointing that way. What force is that? It's not the 20. You know how I know it's not the 20? Because the 20 isn't even touching the 3. What is touching the 3? The rope, the string. What do we call the force that a rope or a string exerts? You're feeling it right now. Tension. I'm going to label that with a capital T. Tension. And I usually just put it right on the rope. You can draw a completely separate arrow line if you want to, but I usually just stick it right on the rope. Those are the three forces acting on mass one. If there was friction, if we weren't on ice, I would also have one more force pointing that way. But what's mu? I don't know what's mu with you. In this question, what's mu? So we're on ice. OK so far? What are the forces acting on mass two? Get the obvious one. Is there more than one mass? I'm going to call this M2G. What else? Is there more than one mass? I'm going to call it normal force number two to go with mass number two. What else? Well, there's definitely that 20, which isn't acting on the three. It's acting on the two. What do we call this mystery force from off the page? I don't know what it's coming from, but we've kind of given it a name. Do you remember? Yep, let's call this F applied. And there's one more force. Anybody see it? Emma, my angel, what do I always want you to say? No. Uh, Loud and proud, what? See that rope connecting both of them? Tension is also pulling that way. It, it, in any tug of war, you'll feel the pull on either end of the rope. You will. Don't believe me? Get some rope and a friend and try it. If you really want to do something scientific, hook some scales up on either end, and you'll see they both measure the same force. You with me so far? 
is anything happening in the vertical direction? Are we sinking into the ground like quicksand or flying into like Superman? No. Which way did you say we're accelerating? To the? Yeah. Who's winning? Who's winning? Force 20, the force of plot. And here's what we've just decided now. Because there's all sorts of forces kicking around. Any force that's pointing to the right is going to be a winner plus. Anything that's pointing to the left is going to be a loser minus. And what we're going to do is we're going to write an equation along the rope. Who's winning? Good. Now we're going to walk along the rope. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Are these two forces along the rope in the same direction? Look up, Sierra. Are these two forces in the same direction as the rope? Say no. Don't care about them yet. Dun -dun 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 -dun. This tension right here, is it a winner or a loser? So we've just decided that anything pointing to the right is going to be a winner plus. So this tension here, so I'm going to go minus tension. Keep going. I run into this tension. This tension here, winner or loser? Have I reached the end of the rope? Yeah. What about those ones, Mr. Duke? Are they in the same direction as the rope? Who cares? We'll deal with them if we need them. What does winner minus loser always equal? Here is the tweak. Are you ready? Do you notice we have forces from more than one mass in my equation? Then I have to have more than one mass in my equation. That's the only tweak we're going to do. We're, and this is why I said in the notes at the very beginning, we treat it like one big ubermass. What do you notice happens to the T's, the tension? Oh, I find these questions so relaxing. Do you know why I find these questions so relaxing, Sierra? Because every time I do them, oh, I just lose tension. Oh, I love it. Really? Nothing? Okay. And notice we started out with something that looked terribly complicated. We wrote an equation. We didn't panic. Free body diagram. We wrote an equation, Chloe, for the whole thing. What was this question asking us to find in part A? Oh, how would I get the acceleration? How would I get the A by itself? What's the bracket doing to the A? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. How I'll move the bracket over. Really? And so I get a nice clean equation. I'm going to get A equals F applied over M1 plus M2. In fact, this is so easy. Sierra, I'll bet you can do this in your head. How big is the applied force? How big is mass 1? How big is mass 2? What is 20 divided by 5 in your head? And it's acceleration meters per second squared. This whole system will accelerate at 4 meters per second squared. Rihanna, what was the second thing they wanted me to find? What did part B say? Problem. What happens to the tensions in this equation? Are you ready for my worst, best joke ever? And I only made this up last year. What happens to my tensions? They vanish, but I want to find tension. I have a tension deficit disorder. Oh, that's so good. I have a tension deficit disorder because I need to find tension, and they vanish. So I have a deficit of Oh, come on! That is good! Why are you a teacher, not a comedian? For many obvious reasons, if you think those are funny. So, what do we do? To find single forces, we look at single masses. Rihanna, we're going to look at the three kilogram mass right here. In my mind, I'm going to completely ignore that one. Don't scribble yours out. We're just going to write an equation for this. I don't need to redo the free body. Degree. You know what? I will down here just so, to make it easier. So we had M1G. We had normal force number one. And we had tension. Which way is that mass accelerating? To the right. So anything pointing to the right is going to be winner plus. Who's winning? 
tension. Who's losing? It's a trick question. No one. So I have this. Tension equals. Now, what does winner minus loser always equal? It always equals m all times a. Here, we're only looking at one mass. Which mass? Mass number. So m1 a. Rihanna, how big is mass one? What's a? This is why Sierra and I had to find a first to find any specific forces. How big is a? In your head, how big is tension? Units, it's a force. Newtons, yep. So our strategy, if you give me more than one mass, I'll try and find acceleration by treating it as one mass. Good free body diagram. And the only tweak is going to be winner minus loser equals uh, m of all of them times a, which is actually what we've always been doing. We've only had one mass, so one mass has always been m all. Then if you want me to find specific forces, I'll go look at one mass. And the nice thing is, it doesn't matter which mass you look at. I could also, Maggie, have looked at the second mass, mass number two. Now on that one, I'm going to quickly resketch. We had uh, M2G, normal force two. We had F applied tension. You can quickly resketch that. Maggie, which way is mass 2? And again, I'm completely ignoring this now because now I'm looking for individual forces from individual masses. Which way is mass 2 accelerating? To the? Who's winning? Who's losing? Ah. What does winner minus loser always equal? This time it's going to be M2A, not M all, not M1, the second mass. What am I trying to find again? Tension. What's right in front of the T that I don't like? Swappy dance. I'm going to plus the tension to there whilst at the same time, attention deficit disorder. Nothing. Wow. I thought that was so bad that it's good. Okay. Anyways, uh, I'm going to end up, Maggie, with this. 20 minus M2A do you mind, can I put the tension equals on the left-hand side? 20 minus, what was M2 from the picture? What was A, do you remember? You know it would be really cool? It would be really cool if we got the same answer for tension that Rihanna got for tension. Do we also get 12 Newtons? So it doesn't matter which mass I pick? You'll notice, though, one of them gave us a slightly easier equation. You'll find most of the time, Jacqueline, if you stop and kind of think about it in your head, one of the masses will be clearly easier to use, but it doesn't matter. There, that's the lesson. Let's do the homework. No, I'm going to practice more, but that is the whole lesson. The whole lesson is you give me more than one mass. No, you didn't. I'll treat it as one mass. And if you do it right, your tensions will cancel. I find these questions oh so relaxing because you always lose tension. And then if you want to find tension, which is usually the specific force I'm looking for, go look at individual mass. We can even have stuff hanging over a cliff. This, by the way, is why I've no longer always said that down is negative and up is positive and right is positive and left is negative. We did that before Christmas in the kinematics unit in the distance, velocity, acceleration of time. Because which way is this mass going to accelerate? which would be negative before Christmas. Which way is this mass going to accelerate, right? Which would be positive. Ah! This is why I said, you know what? Let's just pick the direction that makes the math easier, which is why you'll never hear me say, which one's positive, which one's negative. Emily, you'll hear me say, who's winning? You gonna make it? You're looking like you're getting a little blinky there. You awake? Okay. Emily, what does A want me to find? And what does B want me to find? This is a job for a free body diagram. Is there friction? If I put wheels on something, that's my way of saying you can pretend there's no friction. What are the forces? Let's start on the very left. You don't have to, but just if you want your M1s to match my M1s and your M2s to match my M2s, you got to make it cool. Um, you want to start on the left and work your way across to the right. So uh, what are the forces acting on the six kilogram mass? Get the obvious one. Is there more than one mass? I'm going to call it M1G. Is it sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying here like Superman? So there has to be a normal force. Is there more than one mass? I'm going to call it normal force number one to go with mass number one. 
What else? Is there a rope? What do we call the force that a rope exerts? Is there friction? Are we on wheels? So is there friction? That's my way of saying no friction. Okay? There's no mu. That's the forces on that guy. Let's move to the other mass. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Is there more than one mass? I'm going to call this M2G. Uh, the most you'll get, there are a couple of questions in the homework with three masses, but honestly, if you can handle two, you can handle 50. It just gets unwieldy. What else? Is there a rope? So, what you're feeling right now? Is there a normal force for this mass that's hanging in midair? Jacqueline says no, because what causes a normal force? Contact with a surface. Is it in contact with a surface? So kids always get normal force loopy. They start putting it everywhere, Christy. No, not here. That's it. That's it. Who's winning? Which way is this going to accelerate? I think the only way this can accelerate is to the right and down. And so I think what's causing this is that right there. So I'm going to write an equation along the rope. I'm not going to write a vertical or a horizontal equation. I'm going to write forces that line up with the rope. And anything, once it gets over here, that ends up pointing down is going to be a winner plus. Anything, once it gets over here, that ends up pointing up is going to be a loser minus. So let's write our equation. Who's winning? M2G. And now, Emily, we walk around along the rope. I run into this tension. Winner or loser? So minus. I keep walking along the rope. Now, this tension, I'm not sure if it's a winner or a loser, but if you follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it. When it goes around this corner, I think it ends up pointing down. Yes? And so it's going to be a winner plus or loser minus? Winner plus. Because you decided anything that ended up, once you decided that this was a winner, anything that ends up pointing in this direction is going to be a winner. So winner plus. Are there any other forces along the rope? Mr. Duick, Mr. D don't I have to use normal force one or M1G? Mr. Duick, I no. Are they along the rope? So who cares? They're in my free body diagram, but they're not directly affecting this question. They'll show up when I bring in friction, trust me. What does winner minus loser always equal? M all times A. I'll write that as M1 plus M2 times A. Emily, stretch. Come on, Emily, with me. Stretch. Relax. Why are we stretching? Why are we relaxing? Oh, you lose tension. I love that. This is like spa treatment. Oh. What was... Oh, let's put a little part A here just to be organized because since it did give me a part A. What was part A wanting me to find, M? How do I get the A by itself? Divide the bracket over. Nice. So if I hear you correctly, I think I do, you're telling me the M2G just drops down. Underneath it, there's going to be an M1 plus M2. That equals A. What was M2? This is why we label them carefully. Uh, on yours, by the way, there should be a decimal right there. It's 2.5, not 25. I don't know if the decimal photocopied on yours. What's G? Good. Divided by, what's M1? Plus 2.5. Mr. Duke, do these 2.5s cancel? No. No, 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 no. Not, well, if there's, not if they're being added. Is this a fraction? Is there more than one thing on the top? You probably need brackets. Actually, you can get it without brackets on the top. But you absolutely have to have brackets on the bottom because there's more than one thing on the bottom. So this is one that's worth all of you trying to practice typing into your calculator. So I know on my calculator, I can go 2.5 times 9.8 times 98, Mr. Duick. 0.8. Because it assumes if it's on the top, if it's timesing. But I definitely have to go bracket 6 plus 2.5. Before I hit equals, there is a built-in error check for this question. I'm trying to figure out how fast both of these are accelerating. If I cut the rope, 
What's the maximum acceleration that this thing could be? 9.8. It's getting slowed down by this. I guarantee you're going to get an answer less than 9.8. If you get an answer bigger than 9.8, you've typed something wrong. So a built-in sort of error check. Do you get 2.88235? That there? I'll go 2.88. When in doubt, three sig figs does it for me. A equals 2.88 units, Emily. Good. Chloe, what's part B asking me to find? Like you're feeling right now, a little bit of tension? Um, pick a mass. Doesn't matter. A, uh, mass 1 or mass 2? Mass 1. I would have gone with mass 1 as well because it's going to be slightly easier. So let's put a little part B right here. Now look at mass 1. Which way is it accelerating? Who's winning? Who's losing? Nothing. And you end up with tension equals, are we looking at both masses? We're just looking at one mass. Which mass? Mass number. So I'm going to get winner, no loser, equals M1A. And you can see, Emma, I'm almost done. Like I, I've actually, the equation just generated itself. Chloe, how big is M1? Six. How big is A? I'm going to write 2.88, but you know I'm going to use my answer button because it's less typing. Six times 2.88. No, 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 no. I said I'm going to use my answer button, Mr. Duick. And I get a tension in the rope of 17.3. Tension is a force. What are the units? You can all turn the page, but if you want to, I'm just going to let you know. Chloe could have picked mass 2. What would the equation be? Really quickly, you'd have M2G minus tension equals M. 2a. Chloe, what's right in front of the T? What's Swappy dance. I would get M2g minus M2a. That equals tension. And really quickly, if I try this, if I go 2.5 times 9.8 minus 2.5 times 2.8 88, I also get 17.3. And in fact, if I'd used my answer button, I would have got exactly the same answer. Which one was less writing? Do that way if you can. The only time I don't do the shortest way is if it's confusing. If there's something I'm a little unsure about, oh, but I'm sure of all the forces in the longest way, then I'll do it the longest way. Again, what's our strategy, Maggie? Find acceleration by looking at the overall mass of everything treated as one mass. Tensions will cancel. And then if you want me to find tension, pick a mass, any mass. But try to pick the easiest one. We can even handle problems that have friction. So here is this 2.8 kilogram mass hanging over a cliff. If this 3.2 kilogram mass was glued to the table, this would just dangle. Is it glued? No, there's some friction, but not a lot. This is sitting on not ice, but something pretty slippery. You know what? It's going to get pulled sideways. This is going to get pulled down. Christian, what's part A asking me to find? You know what there's a job for? Okay. Again, you don't have to start on the left. I just do in the same order that we write. So I'm going to start with the 3.2. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Is there more than one mass? I'm going to call it M1G. What else? Before I get there, is it sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying to you like Superman? What else? Let's go systematically. And I'm going to call it normal force number one to go with mass number one. What else? Tension, which way? Good. I'll just label it right on the rope. What else? Is there friction in this question? Because I gave you a mu. So which way will friction be? I have to think about which way this mass is going to slide. Which way is the 3.2 going to slide? To the right. So which way is friction going to be pointing? The other right? What do we call the other right? Wow. 
the other positive, you know, the one that's not positive? Yeah, the negative. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to call it friction force number one to go with mass number one, just to be organized. Okay. I don't think I've missed anything. That works for me from what I understand. Um, oh, on the 2.8, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Is there more than one mass? I'm going to call it M2G. What else? Pointing which way? The other down? Oh, I'm going to be, that's going to be going for a while there, kiddo. Is there a normal force? Is mass 2 sitting on a surface? What's that? Which way did you say this whole thing is going to accelerate? The top mass is going to accelerate to the right, the non-left, and the other one is going to accelerate to the non-up, down. So who's winning? I think it's all being caused by that. So anything that ends up, once it gets to that side, pointing down is going to be a winner plus. Anything that ends up pointing up is going to be loser, the other winner, minus. And I'm going to write an equation along the rope. Let me emphasize that. I'm not writing a vertical force equation because that would be those four. I'm not writing a horizontal. What I'm doing is I'm walking along the rope in my mind and I'm writing any forces that end up in the same direction as the rope. Are you ready? Here we go. So M2G. And now let's walk along the rope. So I'm going to be following that path right there. Right? I run into a tension, winner or loser. So minus. I keep going. I run into another tension. Because if it ended up over there, it would be pointing down. Keep going. Oh, I run into friction number one. Have I got all of the forces on the rope? What's that going to equal? M1 plus M2. Now, if you want to, Christian, you can also write M all times A, whichever. So I'll flip-flop just to let you pick which one you like better. Christian, come on with me, with me, with me. Stretch. Come on. Stretch, come on. I'm, I'm not going to go until you stretch. Come on, stretch out. These are oh, fun questions. When you get to these on the test, I like to see kids just, ah, it's also nice. It relaxes you on the test. Wow, that's a win. So I totally agree. The tension cancels because minus T plus T. What are we trying to find in part A? How do we get the A by itself? Divided by what? A mole. Okay. Uh, do you mind, Christian? I'm going to go A equals already. So the M2G is going to drop down like a domino. The minus... Friction force one is going to drop down like a domino. And that's all going to be over M all. Do I know M2? Now, by the way, now we're just going to do a check to see if we know everything. Do I know M2? Do I know G? 9.8. Do I know friction? Ooh. Okay. Oh, friction is what times what? Okay, so this is going to be M2G minus mu, which normal force? I mean from my free body diagram, which normal force? Normal force number to go with mass number. And that's going to be all over M1 plus M2, M all. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. And another force the same size as the normal force because it's not sinking into the table like quicksand and it's not flying into the air like Superman. Which force is the same size as, no huh? Which M? See, this is why I have to be fussy now because we got masses all over the place. Which M1G? M1G. Do you see it's possible to make sloppy mistakes here and put the wrong mass into the wrong place? Okay. So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're telling me that the acceleration is going to be M2G minus mu M1G all over M1 plus M2. Do a quick check, folks. Do I know everything there? I think I do. I know all the masses. I know G. Hey, what's mu? I don't know what's mu. Yeah, I know mu. All right. 
Plug and chug. What was M2? I've scrolled down, Christian. Sorry? Thank you. G is 9.8 minus, what's mu? Was it 0.11? 0.12? Okay. Uh, what's mass? 1. Nine point eight. Three point two plus two point eight. A bit of a built-in error check. If we cut the rope, the biggest A would be would be nine point eight. So I know I'm gonna get a smaller answer than nine point eight. If I get a bigger answer than nine point eight, I've messed up. Alrighty. Oh, is this a fraction? Is there more than one thing on the top? Brackets. And around the bottom. 2.8 times 9.8. And I would type it that way. I would not type 2.8 bracket, bracket, 9.8 bracket. Too much to keep, too many brackets to keep track of. So I just go 2.8 times 9.8. Take away. 0.12 times 3.2 times 9.8. I close off the top. Divided by, open up the bottom, 3.2 plus 2.8. You could also add that together in your head, Hannah, and get 6. Do we get 3.946? That there? Or am I wrong? So I'll write 3.95. But I'll store this on my calculator. And it's an acceleration meters per second squared. What's the second thing they wanted me to find? I'm going to look at one mass. Now, you ready? Which mass looks way less cluttered and is probably going to be an easier mass to use? Mass one or mass two? Very good. Uh, you could find this with mass one. You'll actually get less work but your equation is going to be more complicated to get there. So let's look at mass 2. So ignore mass 1. Which way is mass 2 accelerating? Up or down? Who's winning? Who's losing? Okay, so for part B, I'm going to go M2G minus tension, and I'm only looking at mass 2. What does winner minus loser always equal? MA. Since we're only looking at mass 2, it's going to be what? M. A. What am I trying to find? What's right in front of the T? So? Swappy dance. Okay. I encourage you, draw the arrows in. Just those two arrows help you keep track of what you did and avoid making dumb mistakes. Because what's going to happen here, Christian, the M2G, M2G drops down like a domino. There's going to be a minus M2A. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to put the T equals on the left by itself because that's where I like to see it. And now, plug and chug. What was M2? G minus 2.8. A, I'll write 3.95 but what button am I going to use on my calculator? Answer button, always. It's less work and more accurate. That's a double win. 2.8 times 9.8 minus 2.8 times answer button. 16.4? Yeah, or am I wrong? Am I right? Yes? Units? We're very close to the physics of elevator engineering. Because in an elevator, you have one mass going down while one mass is going up. We're going to look at that a little more in a couple of days. I'm going to pause here. We have a bunch more to do. Oh, I could almost finish this. I really could. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to say don't hand this in next class because I'm going to continue this next class. But you can certainly try number one. Put a star next to number two. Number one and number two are the same question with different numbers. If you get number one right, don't do number two. If you get number one wrong and you want extra practice, number two is a clone. You can try it. Okay? Number three. 
there's friction. We're going to get to number four with more than two masses in just a second, but I think you can also try number five right now. There's only 10 minutes left. I don't want to give you a bunch of homework. I'll finish this lesson off next class. I'll give you lots of homework next class. We'll also, we have not gone over the special relativity test yet, have we? So I'll go over that next class, make sure I don't forget.